Welcome to section eight of this course. In this section, we will examine the mechanisms that have been established for the protection of human rights at international level. Um, victims of human rights violations, in fact, uh, will often have the choice between different mechanisms uh, that are available to them to, to um, challenge uh, the inability of the state to protect their, their rights at, at domestic level. And uh, the most effective mechanisms they will have access to are those established in, in regional settings, um, respectively by the Council of Europe, the Organization of American States, and the African Union. In 1950 already, within the Council of Europe that was established in, in 1949, um, a first um, European Human Rights Convention uh, was adopted establishing at the time two bodies, the European Commission on Human Rights and the European Court of Human Rights, that provided for the first time um, an international judicial um, mechanism of protection of human rights. And it was at the time a quite advanced mechanism, uh, the most um, advanced um, um, that existed in the world. Um, and to a large extent, this provided the model for later the Organization of American States and the African Union to move in the same direction. Now, since the European Court of Human Rights was, was established, uh, the European Convention on Human Rights entered into force in 1953, and the first judgment of the European Court of Human Rights was in 1961, it has developed a very impressive case law, um, some aspects of which we've been studying in the past sections of this course, um, and it is uh, really um, uh, the most uh, effective mechanism of protection probably that we, that we have uh, today at international level. Um, in 1969, the American Convention on Human Rights was, was adopted for the Organization of American States. Um, and this establishes an Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, as well as the Inter-American Court of Human Rights very much modeled on the European model that was av available um, at, at the time. And since um, that American Convention on Human Rights entered into force, uh, the Inter-American Commission and Courts of Human Rights have been um, making um, progress in a number of directions on some issues such as enforced disappearances, um, massive uh, violations of human rights or the rights of indigenous peoples, it is fair to say that the inter-American human rights system has been um, leading um, the direction and, and really um, um, moving international human rights law forward. More recently, the African Union has been making progress in this direction. Now, the um, African Charter on Human and People's Rights was adopted in, in 1986, but it is in 1998 that the Ouagadougou Protocol was adopted, establishing the African Court on Human and People's Rights. This protocol entered into force in 2004. It puts in place an 11-member court uh, uh, for um, um, human rights on the African continent. And uh, recently, it has um, um, delivered its first judgments. Uh, uh, gradually, it will um, certainly um, uh, contribute further to the development of international human rights law. So these regional mechanisms of protection, which are judicial, in which international courts um, adjudicate disputes between victims of human rights violations and, and states, uh, um, um, on the other hand, um, are certainly the most effective mechanisms that we, that we have. Um, in this section, however, we will focus more on the, on the universal level um, established by the United Nations um, human rights mechanisms. And um, as uh, you will see, the section is divided in essentially two big parts. Um, the first part will look at UN charter-based mechanisms of protection. By this I mean that under the United Nations Charter, um, the um, um, UN has a, a series of mechanisms that apply to all UN member states, um, independently of the treaties that they may uh, have ratified. And this protection of human rights at universal level under the UN Charter is today in the hands of the Human Rights Council, the body that um, in 2006 succeeded 
the Commission on Human Rights uh, that for 60 years, between 1946 and, and 2006, was the leading, uh, the most important body within the UN system dealing with human rights issues. Um, the Commission on Human Rights had been established as a committee of the um, Economic and Social Council under Article 68 of the UN Charter. The Human Rights Council has a status that is um, improved in comparison to the Commission on Human Rights. As we'll see, it is now um, a body that meets uh, three times per year. Um, it has um, a, a composition of 47 uh, member states elected by the General Assembly and, and we will examine the tools that the Human Rights Council has at its disposal. Now, apart from the Human Rights Council and the, the um, monitoring of human rights that applies to all member states of the UN, we have, of course, the, the UN Human Rights Treaties. And we saw earlier on at the very beginning of this course that there are nine core UN Human Rights Treaties, each of them establishing one body of independent experts um, monitoring um, compliance with these conventions. Um, the first one to be established in 2024 was the, was the International Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, establishing the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. But since then, we have seen a proliferation of such treaties. Um, and today, as I said, there are nine such treaties in operation in total. And we will examine in the second part of this section how these human rights treaty bodies function. Um, looking at how they re receive states reports on which they, um, they react by providing feedback in the form of concluding observations on the reports that they, that they examine. And we will examine how um, individuals may file communications with these committees for these committees to find whether or not there has been a violation committed by the state against which these communications are addressed. So there's a distinction between these um, uh, committees established by UN human rights treaties, um, of course applying only to the states that have ratified these treaties, and the charter-based mechanisms um, in the hands of the Human Rights Council that, that apply to all um, UN member states and that are therefore more universal in, in, their, um, in their scope. Um, but this is how we will, we will proceed in this section and I look forward to, to our discussions.